Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. So I want to say appreciate uh, Pastor Felix, Sister Gilbert, Pastor Gilbert, both Pastor Gilbert, Derek, Pastor Derek, and all the ministers really just appreciate all the love and uh, opportunity to be a part uh, and feel like this is your church home. Amen? Amen. Amen. So to all our veterans, thank you. I'm a U.S. Army guy, uh, but I served in a Joint Force Command with uh, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. Uh, and so I want to make sure we, we didn't say anything about the Coast Guard, so I want to make sure I say that. Uh, and uh, I was telling somebody, one of my greatest experiences in military, uh, really, was one Christmas, the United States Marine Corps was short workers for Toys for Tots. And I spent one Christmas in a big old trailer, all Christmas passing out toys with the United States Marines. Probably the best Christmas that I've ever experienced uh, just doing that with them. But I want to get into God's word. I want to ask you to open your Bibles with me to Habakkuk and just keep your Bibles open because we're going to stay there. Uh, and we're going to jump into the second chapter, read verses 1 through 4, then I'll pray, and then we'll get into the text and talk about what God is saying. You're there, say amen. You're not there, say wait for me. Oh, we won't wait. <laughs> got to use your Bible. Got to use your Bible. Amen. Habakkuk. That's in the Old Testament for the Bible scholars. It's, it's right after Nahum and before Zephaniah. For those of you that need them tabs, you know, just kind of help you out there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start reading. The Bible says this in Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets. So he may run who reads it, for still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end, it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up, it is not upright with him, but the righteous shall live by faith. But the righteous shall live by faith. Lord, we thank you for this time, this moment, this season, this opportunity that you have allotted during the time that you've appointed. That those of us that are gathered in this place, the people of God who are caught out of darkness into your marvelous light, those that are in this presence and those that are online, Lord, let your word do what you've purposed it to do. Let your servant that is full of issues, problems, situations, circumstances, full of sin, full of evil and anger and frustration, all those things that you are continuing to deliver from, let them in this moment be put aside that you may do what you've purposed to do. In Jesus' name, amen. I mean, thought today, running by faith, real simple message, not complex Running by faith. And I read to you in the middle portion of Habakkuk in the Old Testament where there's a prophet. His name is Habakkuk. And he has some issues with God and how he perceives God to be doing things. Now, I don't know about you, but every now and then, uh, God doesn't move in the methodology or in the way that I thought or I believed he should move. So... Let me read to you Habakkuk's beginning prayer as he decided he wanted to talk to God. The oracle of the oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw, beginning at verse 1. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence and you not save? Why do you make me see iniquity and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise 
So the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surrounds the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. So Habakkuk had this prayer where he was frustrated with the land he was living in and the time he was living in, he was dealing with what he believed to be a perverted system, not only in justice, but in the land where people were struggling to live out the faith that they were called to live. Now, I don't know, you know, maybe some of y'all might be feeling that way. I can't speak for everybody. But the reality is Habakkuk decided to lift up a complaint to the Lord. And so he went to the Lord in prayer. And I want to say to you, if there are things that you may be having in your heart, struggles, issues, challenges, you know, as I say, you are frustrated, agitated, discombobulated, and every other aided in the dictionary. I want to encourage you to go to the Lord in prayer and tell him your frustration. But, but I want to caution you. I won't caution you now. Just because you go to the Lord in prayer and tell him how you feel about it does not mean that God feels the same way that you feel. It don't mean that God is going to respond to your prayer because you gathered two or three together. So let me read to you what God says because I think it's important. He says, look among the nations and see, wonder, and be astounded, for I am doing a work in your days that if I told you, Lord Jesus, you wouldn't believe it. That's the Jomo Thomas edited version. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, a bitter and hasty nation, who march out through the breadth of the earth and seize dwellings not their own. So let me, let me put this in context. Habakkuk says, okay, look, I live in this land, I live in this country uh, where it just ain't going right. We got some unrighteous problems, and I don't like it. And God, we need revival. You know how we do it? We need revival, Lord. We, we need somebody to show up. Lord, we, we need you to do something in the church. That's what Habakkuk is praying. And God says, okay, I got an answer for you. I'm going to raise up Syria. I'm going to raise up North Korea. I'm going to raise up Iran and I'm going to use them to fix y'all unholy problem. Now, I ain't saying God going to do that on, on TV, y'all, so don't nobody. But I am saying that's what God is doing right here. Now, the problem Habakkuk is having in this moment is that his perception of what God was going to do to fix the unrighteous issues that he was complaining about in his nation and what God was going to do, they didn't line up. Anybody had some stuff recently not line up with you? I'm just, you know, I was praying to God for X, and it looked like he's doing Y. And I'm asking why. And here's what I want to say to you in the message about running by faith. The reality is that God doesn't always need to give you the details of his plan for you to be able to run with the marching orders. See, there were times when I was in the military where I, I just got an assignment. I didn't get all the details. I didn't get all the answers. I just told I was going TDY where I was going to go when I need to be there, how I need to be there, and maybe how much they was going to give me to get there. The problem with us in, in, as believers is that we sometimes think that God has to give us all the prerequisite details for us to be in agreement with his plan. And if he don't give me all the details of his plan, then it might not be his plan. Now, I had a point. I don't know where it's at. Yeah, 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 yeah. His main idea. Yeah, it's not there, it's there. Okay. That's my time. Right, all right. I'm on time limit, y'all. All right. As believers, we are called to live a life of faith directed by the truth of God's word, regardless of the circumstances that we may find ourselves in. Now let me let me do something real quick. 
because I think it's important. Jump over with me to Habakkuk, chapter 1. Yeah. And I want to read. Verses 12 and 13. I think that's it. Chapter 1, verses 12 and 14. Are you not from everlasting, O Lord, my God, my Holy One? We shall not die. O Lord, you have ordained them as judgment, and you, O Rock, have established them for reproof. You who are purer eyes than to see evil and cannot look on wrong. Why do you idly look at traitors and remain silent when the wicked swallow up the man more righteous than he? So I'm going to take a minute on this. Put the next point up. Now Habakkuk is uh, prophesying to the southern kingdom of Judah. The northern kingdom of Israel has been gone for a while. And the, the prophecy is really about Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians, which they probably, depending on how you do biblical uh, history, they've already kind of started seizing parts of Judah. And so his prophecy is really, uh, is really aimed at them to say, listen, I I'm getting ready to straighten this out by taking y'all into slavery. Yeah. Yeah. So Jeremiah captures on to the back end of it. Is where we get the famous statement, I know the plans that I have to you, plans to prosper you, plans to uh, bring you to an expected hope. But what we skip over is that Jeremiah's statement is that I'm going to put you in slavery. And while you're in slavery, waiting for about 70 years, I'm going to straighten y'all behinds out. And I want you to know that the slavery issue is really about correcting your birth defect. And, 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 and the prosper you is really to bring you to a place of sanctification. See, we quote that like prosper you is to give you a new car, to give you a new house, to make you healthy, wealthy, and wise. But really the prosper that Jeremiah was talking about was straightening up the condition of the crookedness that the nation was walking in. So Jeremiah captures on the back of Habakkuk. Now here's the part that really gets good. Daniel now is forced to live out the prophecy. Now, here's the birth defect, and we have this problem as a nation. Habakkuk makes this statement, God, why are you using a nation who we're more righteous than? Now, he just was praying about the wickedness of their nation, but now he's going to get mad because he used someone to match their wickedness. So he matched their illness with illness, and Habakkuk got upset with the illness. Yeah. And then he has the nerve to say that they're more righteous than the tool that God is using. Now, I want you to think about this. In America, we have a problem. Our American birth defects, because we've been talking about birth defects, yeah. is that we have a national Christian manifest destiny, so we think. Yeah. And, and we have been negatively impacted as most Christian spiritual development to see and accept how God works. Because we think, one, God raised up America as the second coming of Israel. We think that we was birthed as a Christian nation. Let me, let me, I, I know it's Veterans Day. Let me, let me help our birth defect. So what is, what is done is it's made a self-defined righteousness. We have a false belief in a Christian destiny as a nation. And we have a false Pharisaic belief that morality makes one righteous or Christian. Now, one, we're not more righteous than every other nation. We're not more righteous. We're just one of the nations that God has used. If you read Daniel and you read the statue, let me tell you, every nation that has ever been raised up and used by God has been used by God to do his will and his direction to bring history to a particular purpose that he is destined and designed. That nation was nothing more than a tool during a period of time that God had allotted for him to be able to use them to get the saints of God where they need to go. 
But what we do is we see ourselves as righteous because the nation used that to justify them murdering a whole bunch of indigenous people. So they claimed it. So they claimed it manifest destiny. So in our birth defect, we grab hold to that and we come into church and think that America was birthed on Christian principles when we nothing more than Pharisees looking out for ourselves. So as a result, we come into the church thinking that because we're American, we are Christian, and your being American makes you no more Christian than you being a car in the garage makes you a Porsche. So when God is moving and doing difficult things, we get frustrated and agitated in America because we think somehow he is not supposed to allow difficulties and challenges and issues to come into our life. So then we get weak in the knees and we want to quit and we want to stop running this life of faith because we think God has somehow done us wrong. Why? Because we think that after the New Testament, God came down, he walked with the founding fathers, he sat down with them and said, we're going to write the Constitution now together and the constitution is right up under God's word and God sanctioned a separation of church and state when Israel was all about church and state so this is what happens God moves and we don't have the faith to move with him because we have a birth defect that makes us think somehow we were born into a righteous condition when really our righteous condition was nothing more than as sinful as every other nation that exists. So then we get to the text that I read where it says, let's go to here, chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Let me go to the answering. I love when God answers. Verse 2, and the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits appointed time, it hastens to the end, it will not lie. If this seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Let's go to the next slide. First of all, here's what we do. We take this text, and we think it means for us to write our vision, to take it to God, ask God to bless it, and then now, because we wrote it on some paper, we got two or three, because you knew we got to add the two or three in there. And then we came into agreement. We anointed it with oil. And after we anointed it with oil, God now is obligated to make what we wrote on paper, our vision, come to pass. Now, if you read the text, the text says that God answered him and said, look, shut your mouth, write my vision. And make it plain. That the person... Now, this is what it means by the reader who readers may run. That when people are dealing with the difficult moment of being in bondage, they're able to go back to the context of my word and see that I'm the one that caused this nation to do what I called it to do. And they will not get weak and faint and fall, but continue to live by faith. It is not your vision that God is trying to bring to pass. It is God's vision that he's trying to birth inside of you so you can do what he called you to do. Let me tell you something, history is moving in a predetermined teleological path. Thus God determines the purpose, the plan, and the direction of history, not our prayers. Let me tell you something. If you read Revelations, I got 15 minutes. I'm gonna give me, let me just, I'm gonna try to bring this home. Really, really 10, because I gotta do five minute altar call. But anyway, can we do three? Can we do three minutes? All right. No. <laughs> All right. If you read Revelations, this is, this is our problem in America, why we struggle with the events that took place. If you read Revelations, first of all, there is never going to be a righteous nation that rises up that fixes the world's problems. Most of us, our problem, and I'm going to use a theological word that I probably shouldn't use, most of us say that we are pre-meal, but most of us are what I call post-meal, meaning that pre-meal means we believe that Jesus Christ is going to come and establish a millennial kingdom. But most of us are believing that somehow that America is the church and it's going to rise up and usher in an age of glory before Christ come back. 
And so when America doesn't do what you think it should do, but it does exactly what all wicked, evil nations do, act evil, wicked, I'm not surprised because it does what it does. Sin people do what sin people do. I mean, you know, I'm just saying, I mean, if you're dealing with somebody that don't know the Lord, don't believe in the Lord, and they do something ungodly, why you get upset? I'm just saying, I'm, you know, I don't know about you. I, I, I mean, you know, really, you, you, you can't believe it said that. I can't. Really? I mean, you, we act in shock. That ungodly people acting ungodly. I don't know what God is doing. I do. He's moving history down the path to force people to see that they need him. And we're missing the opportunity to live a life of faith in front of them and distinguish ourselves by our ability to walk by faith and not by sight. So then he says, listen, Habakkuk, this is what I want you to do. I want you to write the vision. I want you to write what I said. I want you to make it clear. I want you to put it down so that in the difficult moment, uh, they can come back to my word. So then he says, let those that shrink away, I'm not with them. But the just, the righteous, should live by faith. Now, there's a text. Next slide. There's a text. It's one of my favorite scriptures. To make a note is John 17, 17. It says this. Sanctify them in the truth, for thy word is truth. And it's doing Jesus Christ's high priestly prayer. So let me say it like this. How we do this, real quick, is that we have to be people of the word that the word guides our thoughts, our emotives, and our behaviors. Our thoughts, our emotions, and our behaviors. Not just our thoughts, not just our behaviors, not just our emotions, but our thoughts, our emotions, and our behaviors. Now the text, John 17 and 17 says, sanctify them in the truth, for thy word is truth. And the idea of being sanctified in the truth in that text is that you are distinguished, set apart, according to the truth of God's word, so that when people see you, they recognize that the word of God is breathing on the outside of you, so that when you live out your word, you live it out according to the truth. So then you can go back to the text and say, listen, God has always used unfortunate difficult circumstances God has always raised up ungodly un, 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 uneducated un, unholy whatever you want to say people to do his will God has always done things like that so I have no reason to think God isn't doing what he's already done so I can walk by faith now Romans 15 and 4 we're going to wrap up with this let me get there. Right, turn to Romans 15 and 4. Actually, I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. We who are strong have an obligation to bear the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of you please his neighbor for his good to build him up. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. But whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction and that through endurance and through encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. You go to the end of Habakkuk, he makes this statement. He says, I'm going to wait patiently on God to judge the evil nation when he judges them. But what I'm going to do until that time I'm just going to live for you. Let me tell you what the answer is. We have a very simple order from the commander-in-chief. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Your neighbor as yourself and make disciples. 
Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, regardless of who the president, regardless of who the king. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself, and make disciples. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, your neighbor as yourself, and make disciples. I don't know how difficult that is. Does he say do it when it's favorable? Did he say do it when it's people leading that you like? Does he say do it when the world does everything the way you agree it? No. In the good and in the bad, you still love God and your neighbor as yourself. In the good and the bad, you still make disciples. In the good and the bad, you still stand for what is right. Folks in your job don't want to stand for what's right, you walk by faith. People in your house don't want to stand for what's right, you walk by faith. People in the community don't want to stand for what's right, you walk by faith. People in the church don't want to do what's right, you walk by faith. The Bible says that the just shall walk by faith. When do I walk by faith? When God wakes me up, when do I walk? walk by faith. Uh, when I go home in the morning, uh, when do I walk by faith? Every single opportunity that I get. My walking by faith isn't conditional on the parliament. My walking by faith isn't conditional on the president. My walking by faith isn't conditional on who's in the Senate. My walking by faith is conditional on my relationship that God has saved me. So now, if you're having difficulty loving people because one person, you, 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 you we didn't lost. Now, let me tell you something. The witness of the Christian was to do what was right in the moment of despair. The witness of the church was to still maintain their spirit of discipline and godliness in their language and how they conducted what they said about whatever leader was there. The witness is in the midst of the difficulty, in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the darkness, there is a light. But our birth defect. Yeah, he was talking about birth defect, right? Yeah, my I still at. All right, I'm doing something. It's our birth defect that clouds us to thinking that America is more than it really is. That's all. Let me say this. If, if, and, and I'm not judging. If during this event that took place, you was questioning God, wondering what God was doing, Habakkuk was doing the same thing. So you ain't alone. The difference is that Habakkuk had to be transparent after he questioned God and write it out. And we have the benefit of scripture and going back and seeing how God does things. Let me, let me make this statement real quick. In Revelations, I want to say it's chapter 13 and 17. There's a statement and it, it always is something I'm a little strange, but it, it comforts me. It may not be comforting you, but it says that God gave the saints over for a season to be overcome by the beast. Listen to me. God gave the saints over for a season to be overrun by the beast. Now, I'm not defining who the saints are, whether they're the Israel saints, whether they're all, I'm not trying to get into that right now, but here's the point, that God is not concerned with the temporal. He's concerned with the eternal, and he's trying to get you to stop looking at success in this life. So whether you die here, is bad here, if you save the point of your comfort is that if my hope was in this world, I was uttermost miserable. But my hope is really in the return of Jesus Christ, not in who is elected in any country in office. So if you're sad, depressed, all those things, online or here, God has you exactly where he wants you. Because he wants you to realize that your hope was in the wrong thing. You didn't even know it. You didn't even know it. 
And all he did was answer your prayer to grow deeper and say, well, let me reveal to y'all where y'all really at so that you can come back home and trust me. Here's the question. I'm not against whoever's in office, but who's in office don't rise and float my boat? And I'm, and I'm going to be honest with you. The reason I, I taught through Habakkuk is I, I believe in teaching through books and this happened to be a book that dealt with what we were dealing with. I really dislike taking moments um, of time for the Lord to exalt him to deal with national issues. But because this is one of those issues that I feel impacts our ability to, to, to really live out the love of God in the midst of, of scenarios that we're supposed to be really just shining bright, I felt the need to address it. Listen, God just wants you to focus on him and doing what's right. You don't have to focus on what's wrong. Focus on what's right. Love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. And make disciples. And let all that other stuff take care of itself. I'm not saying don't advocate. I'm not saying don't be a part of social solutions. But don't let your heart get all wrapped up in that stuff to where you can't function in the morning. Let me tell you how you know you can't function in the morning or do today. You can't eat. You can't sleep. Let me tell you, I got a rule. I'm going to eat. And I'm going to sleep. I'm going to eat. In case y'all want to cook. And I'm going to sleep. If you're here, and me and you's like, wow, I, I just felt hopeless. And you haven't come to a place where you've just accepted Jesus Christ to know that he's going to come back and fix all this. I want to tell you that there is a king, a ruler, a righteous king that will establish a time that's not yet, but we're manifesting pieces of it. And he wants you to know that in the midst of everything that our country and other countries are dealing with, to come to him. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you haven't accepted him, you haven't come to a place where this world's system isn't controlling you. I want to invite you. I want to invite you to know Jesus. To know him in the power of his resurrection. And maybe you know him and you allowed yourself to get overwhelmed by everything that was going on. I want to encourage you to return to his word and see what he has said because God is the one directing history and he's moving it to a particular end so that when he comes back then you really know who the king of glory is in Jesus name Amen.